the Xylothian warriors' knives would soon drip with the blood of puny human children, and the filthy primitives would kneel in chains before the mighty alien hunter gods. At least, that's what the Xylothian fools actually believed. Zorgak stepped off his warship onto the red sands of his home planet Xyloth Prime, fresh from conquering the Brycon system. His clan leader, Thrax, greeted him. Zorgax, I have a new mission for you, Thrax said. Our scouts found a primitive species called humans on a planet called Earth. You will lead the invasion to enslave them. Their bodies are weak and they have no advanced weapons. It will be easy. Zorgax pounded his fist against his chest in salute. Finally, a chance to prove his strength and earn glory. He would bring back human skulls and rivers of blood to honor his clan. He gathered his troops and weapons, hundreds of enormous battle cruisers, millions of bloodthirsty warriors armed to the fangs with plasma rifles and neuro whips. This primitive earth would fall in days, its people enslaved or eaten. The Xylothian horde would feast on man flesh and adorn their armor with man bones. Zorgax boarded his flagship, ready to add another conquest to his list but he did not know then that he was leading them not to an easy victory, but to the slaughter. Not to glorious triumph, but to the very gates of hell itself. For Zorgax would soon learn that there are no warrior gods in this universe greater than the gods of mankind, and there is no fury in the cosmos that can match the fury of free humans defending their home. Zorgax's fleet hung in Earth's orbit like a swarm of angry hornets. The blue-green world slowly turned beneath them, oblivious to the threat at its doorstep. Zorgax stood on the bridge of his ship, watching the planet through narrowed eyes. Send a scout to test their defences, he ordered. A single scout ship detached from the fleet and descended towards the planet's atmosphere. Its scanners probed the surface, searching for signs of resistance. But as it entered the upper atmosphere, a barrage of missiles streaked up from the surface and slammed into the ship's hull. The scout ship exploded in a ball of flame, its debris raining down on the planet below. Zorgax slammed his fist on the console, leaving a dent in the metal. Impossible! These primitives shouldn't have weapons capable of that! But he would not be deterred by one lucky shot. He still had a massive invasion force at his command. Deploy the drop pods! We will take this planet by force! Thousands of drop pods launched from the fleet, each one carrying a dozen heavily armed Xylothian warriors. They punched through the atmosphere in streaks of fire, hurtling towards the surface at breakneck speeds. As the pods slammed into the earth, hatches blew open, and the Xylothian warriors poured out plasma rifles at the ready. They expected to be greeted by primitive savages armed with spears and rocks. Instead, they were met with a hail of bullets and artillery fire. Tanks rolled out from camouflage positions, their cannons roaring. Armored soldiers rushed forward, assault rifles blazing. Attack choppers swooped down from the sky, missiles already seeking their targets. Forward! Kill them all! Zorgax roared through the comms. But his warriors were falling by the dozens, cut down by the humans' surprisingly advanced weaponry. Plasma rifle blasts were answered by fifty caliber rounds that punched through the toughest Xylothian armor. Neurowhips crackled uselessly against the humans' tactical shielding. Zorgax watched the tactical feeds with growing horror. The humans were fighting back with a level of technology and coordination that rivaled the Xylothians' own. Missiles, rockets, railguns, these were not the weapons of primitives. He had been deceived. This planet was far more advanced than he had been led to believe. As more drop pods landed and more warriors died, the reality of the situation became clear. This would not be the easy conquest Zorgax had imagined. It would be a war, a brutal, bloody war fought street by street, building by building, against a species that was clearly not as weak as they appeared. The cities of Earth would become battlegrounds, where only the strongest would survive. Zorgax gripped the hilt of his neuro whip, a grim smile spreading across his face. So be it. If these humans wanted a war, he would give them a war. He would drown their world in blood and build his throne on a mountain of their skulls. This planet would be his, even if he had to rip it from humanity's cold, dead hands. Zorgax charged through the rubble-strewn streets, 
his plasma rifle spitting death at any human soldier unfortunate enough to cross his path. These humans were putting up a tougher fight than he ever expected, but they were still no match for a Xylothian warrior bred for combat. A burst of gunfire rattled off his armor, and Zorgax whirled to face his attacker. A lone human soldier stood defiantly amongst the ruins, an assault rifle gripped tightly in his hands. Captain John Reese, his uniform named him. Zorgax grinned, baring his fangs. Finally a worthy opponent. He tossed aside his rifle and drew his neuro whip, the crackling energy casting a sickly glow across his features. Reese didn't hesitate. He opened fire, rounds pinging off Zorgax's armor as the Xylothian charged. Zorgax lashed out with his whip, the crackling energy barely missing Reese as he rolled to the side. They clashed in a furious melee, Zorgax's whip a blur of motion as Reese dodged and weaved, retaliating with precise strikes from his rifle butt. Zorgax was impressed despite himself. This human was skilled, matching him blow for blow. He caught Reese with a glancing blow, the neuro whip searing across the human's chestplate. Reese grunted in pain but didn't falter, answering with a rifle butt to Zorgax's jaw that made the Xylothian see stars. They separated for a moment, circling each other warily. Zorgax tasted blood in his mouth. He grinned savagely. You fight well for a human, he growled. I will take great pleasure in killing you. Reese's eyes narrowed behind his visor. You'll have to work for it, ugly. They charged each other again, but before they could clash, the world exploded around them. A stray artillery shell struck the building next to them, showering them in debris. Zorgax felt a searing pain as a chunk of rubble crushed his leg, pinning him. His neuro whip skittered away, out of reach. Through the ringing in his ears, he heard Reese cry out in pain. The human had been thrown clear but was clearly hurt, clutching his side as he struggled to rise. This was Zorgax's chance, if he could just reach his rifle. But his rifle was gone, lost in the explosion, and as he watched, Reese stumbled towards him, one hand pressed to a bleeding wound in his side, the other gripping his rifle. Zorgax snarled in defiance, waiting for the killing shot, but it never came. To his shock, Reese slung his rifle and knelt beside him, straining to shift the rubble, pinning Zorgax's leg. What? What are you doing? Zorgax growled, confusion and anger warring within him. Reese grunted with effort as he heaved the rubble aside. Saving your ass, what does it look like? Zorgax struggled to comprehend as Reese pulled him clear of the rubble, propping him up against a wall. The human pulled a med kit from his belt and began dressing Zorgax's wounds with quick, efficient movements. Why? Zorgax managed to rasp. Why help me? I'm your enemy. Reese paused, meeting Zorgax's gaze. In the human's eyes, Zorgax saw something he'd never seen from an enemy before compassion, understanding. Because. Reese said quietly. I'm not fighting this war to be a monster. If we lose our humanity in the process of defending it, what's the point? He finished bandaging Zorgax's wounds and stood, wincing as he clutched his own injury. Try not to die. I'd hate to have wasted a med kit. With that, Reese retrieved his rifle and limped away, leaving a stunned Zorgax to ponder the mercy he'd just been shown by an enemy he'd sworn to destroy. Zorgax grunted as the human soldiers shoved him into the interrogation room, his hands bound behind his back. The wound in his leg throbbed with every step, a constant reminder of his humiliation at the hands of these primitives. The room was sparse, with nothing but a metal table and two chairs. Zorgax was forced into one of the chairs, the metal cold against his skin. He glared at the two-way mirror on the wall, knowing that the humans were watching him. The door opened and a human walked in, tall and broad-shouldered, with a face that looked as if it had been carved from stone. He carried himself with an air of authority, and Zorgax knew instantly that this was a leader among the humans. "'I am General Marcus Thompson,' the human said, his voice deep and commanding. "'And you are Zorgax, commander of the Xylothian invasion force.' Zorgax said nothing, merely glaring at the human with undisguised hatred, Thompson sat down across from him, folding his hands on the table. You're probably wondering why you're still alive. 
I assume you want information, Zorgax growled, but I will tell you nothing. I am a warrior of Xyloth. I do not fear death. Thompson leaned back in his chair, a small smile playing at the corner of his mouth. Oh, I don't think you'll be dying any time soon. You see, we've learned a lot about your kind in the short time you've been here. He tapped a finger on the table. That scout ship you sent, we shot it down, but not before we got a good look at its technology. Our scientists have been working around the clock to reverse engineer it. We already have prototypes of energy weapons and shielding that can match yours. Zorgax felt a flicker of unease, but he kept his face impassive. Impossible. Your kind is primitive. You couldn't possibly understand our technology. How you underestimate us, Thompson said, his voice hardening. Just like you underestimated our will to fight. Look around you, Zorgax. Look at what your invasion has done. He gestured to the two-way mirror. Out there, millions of humans are united against you. Every man, woman, and child on this planet is ready to fight to the last breath to defend our home. We may not have your strength or your technology, but we have something you lack, something that makes us stronger than you can possibly imagine. Zorgax scoffed, and what is that? Unity, Thompson said simply. A common purpose, a shared dream. Every human on this planet, regardless of nation or creed, is united in the defense of our world. Against that kind of determination, that kind of ingenuity, you cannot win. Despite himself, Zorgax felt a grudging respect for the human. He had seen that determination firsthand in the eyes of John Rhys as he pulled Zorgax from the rubble. "'What do you want from me?' he asked, his voice losing some of its defiance. "'I want you to see the truth,' Thompson said. "'I want you to realize the futility of your mission. Even if you could defeat us, even if you could enslave every human on this planet, you would never break our spirit. We would fight you to the end and beyond.' He leaned forward, his eyes boring into Zorgax's. I'm offering you a chance, Zorgax, a chance to end this war before more lives are lost on both sides. Help us understand your people, help us find a way to coexist, because the alternative is the destruction of both our races. Zorgax was silent for a long moment, his mind racing. Everything he had ever known, every belief he had ever held, was being challenged by this human. Could it be true? Could the Xylothians' way of conquest and domination be wrong? He thought of Rhys, of the compassion the human had shown him. He thought of the determination he had seen in the eyes of the human soldiers as they fought against impossible odds. And for the first time in his life, Zorgax began to doubt. Zorgax sat in his cell, his mind reeling from the events of the past few days. The war with the humans had taken a turn he never expected. These primitives these weaklings had proven to be far more formidable than he ever imagined. Their technology, their tactics, their sheer determination. It was unlike anything he had ever encountered. But it wasn't just their military prowess that had shaken him. It was their compassion, their willingness to show mercy even to an enemy. John Rhys had saved his life, tending to his wounds, even as Zorgax had tried to kill him. General Thompson had treated him with the respect he had never received from his own kind, offering him a chance at understanding instead of simply demanding his obedience. The more he thought about it, the more he began to question everything he had ever believed, the Xylothian way of conquest and domination, the very ideals he had built his life around. Were they wrong? Was there another path, one that didn't lead to endless war and destruction? His thoughts were interrupted by a sudden commotion outside his cell. Shouts, gunfire, the sizzle of plasma rifles. He rushed to the door, peering out through the small window. To his shock, he saw a group of Xylothian prisoners, led by none other than Thrax, his former clan leader. They were making a break for it, overpowering the human guards and fighting their way towards the exit. For a moment, Zorgax was tempted to join them, to fight his way to freedom and return to the Xylothian fleet. But then he saw John Rhys and General Thompson rushing to engage the escapees. They were outnumbered, outgunned, but they fought with a courage and skill that took his breath away. In that moment, Zorgax made his decision. 
He pounded on the door of his cell, shouting to the guards, Let me out, I can help stop them. The guards hesitated, but a nod from General Thompson was all they needed. They opened the cell and Zorgax rushed out, grabbing a fallen plasma rifle. He charged into the fray, firing at his former comrades with a fury that surprised even him. Reese and Thompson fought beside him, the three of them forming a united front against the Xylothian escapees. Thrax snarled as he saw Zorgax. Traitor, you would fight against your own kind? Zorgax met his gaze unflinchingly. No, Thrax, I fight against those who would bring destruction and death to the innocent. I fight for a future where our kinds can coexist in peace. Thrax roared in anger, charging at Zorgax with murder in his eyes. But Zorgax was ready. He sidestepped Thrax's attack, bringing his rifle butt down on the clan leader's head with a sickening crunch. Thrax crumpled to the ground, dead. The rest of the Xylothian prisoners, seeing their leader fall, quickly lost heart. They threw down their weapons, surrendering to the humans. As the adrenaline faded, Zorgax found himself standing alongside Rhys and Thompson, surrounded by the bodies of his former brethren. He felt a hand on his shoulder and turned to see Thompson looking at him with respect. Oh, you did the right thing, Zorgax, the general said. I know it couldn't have been easy turning against your own kind. Zorgax shook his head. They are not my kind, not anymore. My place is here with those who would seek understanding over conquest. Thompson nodded. You'll always have a place with us, Zorgax. We could use someone like you, someone who understands both our worlds. As the prisoners were led away and the base settled back into an uneasy calm, Zorgax couldn't help but ponder the future. He had turned his back on everything he had ever known, but somehow it felt right. He knew that the road ahead would not be easy, that there would be those on both sides who would resist the idea of peace. But he also knew that the humans had shown him a different way, a better way, and he was determined to help them, to be a bridge between their two kinds. For he had seen the strength of the humans, not just in their weapons and their warriors, but in their hearts and their minds. And he knew, with a certainty that filled his very being, that the galaxy would soon have to reckon with this strength, that the humans were a force that could not be ignored, a force that would change the very fabric of the universe. Zorgax smiled to himself, a true smile, perhaps the first of his life. He was ready for whatever lay ahead, ready to fight, not for conquest, but for a future where all kinds could live in harmony, a future that the humans had shown him was possible. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.